So it's my honor to do the um, last section um, for, for this part of this tutorial. Um, might be a little short, but um, let's see. So what we uh, want to discuss here are advanced reductions and scans. So uh, the basic tutorial doesn't uh, mention scans at all and uh, has only a very simple example of reduction. So the idea is here to see what does the full interface look like? What can you achieve with reductions? Um, how can you modify them? What kind of options do you have to avoid synchronizations and um, maybe also do like multiple reductions? Okay. So just as a as a recap, jump right in. Um, in the uh, beginner tutorial in that slide, we uh, kind of left off with this simple reduction example. Um, so basically, we say uh, Cocos reductions are as simple as OpenMP reductions. So right? in OpenMP, you just have this this pragma, and then say you want to do a reduction has have the range and then then basically just uh what you want to do inside this kernel um and you have here up here how you want to combine these values now in the simplest case for cocos um it's very similar you have a global um variable here that you want to write into you say you want to do a parallel reduction um, and then you don't really say how you want to combine all these values um, outside of what the functor is doing. So there's no correspondence to this plus plus here, you can see. And that's all happening implicitly. So basically, we, if you only give um, the power reduce a scalar at the end, then what it does is it assumes you kind of want to do a sum reduction. And yeah, this is the simplest example, but um, we can we can do more. We can show a little bit more how, how that actually works and what this is simplified from. Okay, let's see. So we have seen um, if we only uh, give the, uh, uh, as a last, last member, uh, um, a scalar variable, then we do a sum reduction. But what we expect in the last argument um, can only also be a reducer, like so-called reducer. So that means that we combine um, elements um, across threads differently. And of course, this has kind of to match what we do inside the kernel. Like here, we try to do um, a max reduction. And um, we want to say this max reduction is happening on a double. So that's what we need to do. And um, then um, we basically say, yeah, whenever you get results from multiple threads, then you take the maximum. And for that to make sense, you have to mirror that concept within um, the within the kernel. Because otherwise, it's I mean it's it's not defined when you would otherwise take the the maximum or different operations. And so for this, um, we have a bunch of built-in reducers. We have some. We have a product. We have a min and a max and a min lock and a max lock and a min max lock and all that kind of things. Um, that would give you like the minimal position and the maximum position. And some of them have special scalar types, like the scalar type that you um, get here might consist of, um, say, a position and a value um, in case you want to find like the minimum location. And so you need to, to, to work with that. But conceptually, this is exactly the same, right? Um, and you, the only thing that changes is that the value type um, here matches and then that the kernel and the reducer must match. Okay. And of course, what's important here again is that we have an idea of what the identity operation is. Um, so whenever a thread launches, we need to give it a value that it can um, combine with so we get the same value back. 
and for um, the built-in reductions, this is done via this reduction identity concept. So you can specialize that um, if uh, we don't provide uh, the specialization for whatever scalar type you want to use. Okay. Um, another use case is multiple reductions. So if you want to do um, multiple <laughs> reduction with one per reduce, say you want to take the maximum of some values, but then also at the same time compute the sum um, of some other values, um, you can do that as well. And um, how that works is just that you append reducers here. So like the more um, of these return values you give, each of them specifies a reduction and then the uh, respective scalar type needs to match um, in the kernel. And again, uh, you would then need to make sure that each of these variables is, um, is handled correctly with respect to, to their reducer. But yeah, this, this works the same way. It's, it's very easy, just pass more arguments. Um, from the implementation point of view, um, it's a little interesting that we always assume that everything is in host space. Or if it's not in host space, then we copy it to host space. So there's like some more synchronization overhead um, if you do that. Of course, in general, um, all these reductions don't need to um, be in, in host space. So what this actually means is core cross max float host space. So we're saying max value is a host space variable. So we need to copy it to the device to do something with it. And in the end, we need to copy it back. But if it's on the device, then we can we can say here float comma um, default memory space or like CUDA memory space or not. And then we would avoid uh, all, all these copies. Okay. So that already kind of leads um, to the next point, which is that um, all these reductions that we've seen so far are blocking. So um, in general, all the APIs and core costs that take execution space instance are supposed to be non-blocking or asynchronous. So you need to manually block, but there is some example, uh, some exceptions from that if you are using parallel reduce or parallel scan or something like that. Um, in particular, because you have a result and this result needs to be visible or we want it to be visible if we know that it lives on the host. So um, we can avoid that, um, as I said before, um, if we provide um, the uh, re reduce with the result type that is um, in device space. So we see that in this first example here, we do parallel reduce. And then the result type here is a host sum. So in that case, um, we should not be blocking if it's a view, but we might be blocking. Um, and so if it's like on the device, then we could also just pass in here the sum, and then it would not be blocking. So you need to fence um, to be able to, to work with the result here. Um, a third example then is that we can also do the same thing uh, with reducers. Um, basically, you need to say again, hey, uh, my value here lives in CUDA space. And well, to for that to make sense, um, it needs to be a view. Uh, because otherwise, I mean, every scalar variable you pass in here um, immediately, I mean, it's clear that that lives in host space. But yeah, this is a way to avoid um, the synchronization. Just grab it in a view. And in particular, if you don't need it immediately on the host, it's, it's better to just keep it on the device and work with that. And please uh, interrupt me and ask questions um, if there's anything. If I'm going too fast or something, it's not clear. Okay. So... <laughs> 
we kind of like tackle that from uh, uh, from like from easy to difficult or maybe from easy example to difficult examples. Um, but what I oftentimes like to see is like, how is this all implemented in Corcos or what, like what are all the capabilities and then go from there to see um, what kind of um, specializations or simplifications we provide. So this is um, a pseudocode for a GPU implementation. So that basically what we're doing um, on the CUDA hip uh, or sickle or maybe, maybe target, well, maybe not maybe target, but OpenACC backend. Um, and that is on every thread that we have, we call um, a init member function for whatever um, the reducer is that, that we use in the end. Um, and normally, um, like if you don't provide uh, any reduce argument, just a scalar, then this is uh, uh, then this is the default constructor. But for all of the um, uh, cocos provided uh, reductions uh, reducers, like some um, prod, min, max, and whatnot, um, this is implemented accordingly. So for example, for, for the prod, for product, um, in it just initializes to one. Just try to, it just uh, gives you the identity basically. And it's a function, not a value. So it needs to be device callable. Okay. So, so with this member function, we know how to initialize every thread. So that's what we're doing here. And then uh, we just take our part um, of the uh, of the range and just call the functor, which is supposed to to combine the values in the user intended way. And then we need to join all these values between threads in the same thread group. So that means like um, within a block, if we talk about CUDA and um, all this then calls join. Um, so, so the functor here uh, obviously call, has, uses the call operator, operator, but then the reducer that is necessary calls join. Um, and and again, like join by default, if uh, we don't have, um, if you only have a scalar um, return value, then that's uh, plus equal. And all of our um, reducers implement uh, this join member function accordingly. Um, and then um, we we let one last thread merge all results from all these thread groups, which uses again join to do that. And then we have the option that uh, on one thread, uh, we call final on the result to modify it in some way. And so the most the three most interesting ingredients are in a join and final that we need to understand um, if we want to uh, implement uh, our own reducers or the basically use the full interface that that Cocos provides. Um, is there any question? Yeah, there's I have a... a question in the chat. Oh. Go ahead. Let's see. Yeah, there's a question in the chat. Do reducers have static member functions that can be called inside the Cocos Lambda so we don't have to duplicate code? Um, yeah, no. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't, I mean, I mean, yes and no, right? Because, I mean, you have join. But the question is if your functor is a reducer, right? So um, if say you only have a, um, a sum reduction or like, like let's, let's just go back um, real quick to our easiest example, um, which is this one, right? Um, so now you're in the functor and the functor doesn't have any idea what the reducer is, like how you want to, to combine it. Um, so uh, you kind of need to to know what you want to do here, and, th and then that's 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 kind of problematic. 
in this example, I mean, you don't have access to, to the variable or to the reducer that does the sum reduction here. But there are ways um, to, to kind of do that. Um, yeah, I guess I was, so, yeah, yeah if, if you go to the next example with the if uh, stuff, you know, this, I, I was wondering if basically here there's like a Cocos Max double colon colon apply where I could pass my value and value to update or something like this. And or if there's an interface where, for example, instead of just getting a double, we get some Cocos type object that would have a static member variable that's a shallow wrapper, or, you know, I guess with when did C++ get explicit template parameters in Lambda 20? If there's any plans to sort of make this so it can be abstracted a little bit more, or if there's anything available right now. And maybe you'll get to this in, in that case. I'm sorry for disrupting. <laughs> well, yeah, in short, I mean, is is it's just what I talked about, right? You can just use Cocos Max double um colon colon join. Okay. And then then that would just do that. But okay. you still need it in like two different levels, right? Because the functor is like, I mean, nested um <laughs> from from the point of view of per reduce. So there's no way to do that automatically. So you still need to say Cocos Max twice, basically. Right, right, right. Okay. I just then don't have to write the if part, which was the main thing I was like yes. worried is maybe an overstatement, but you know, silly typos happen. So I'm just trying to think of a way to reduce that. Thank oh you. yeah. I mean these 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 things happen. Okay. Okay, let's see how how we could make this better. <laughs> uh, answering the question basically. So, okay, so as we talked about how uh, how reductions really work in Cocos. Okay. I mean, but really it's like, this is one type of implementation, like Syria backend and OpenMP would do it differently, of course, but conceptually we have inner join and final, and that's important. Okay, so what can a reducer actually be? I mean, a reducer object is basically something that uh, specifies how to initialize um, reduction values, how to join uh, values, and then to say like maybe final what what we want to do in the end um, with the with the, with the result. Okay, so first the first case is if we have a reducer, like if the last argument to pair reduce is a reducer that is um, a type with a reducer alias to itself, then we use that. Um, there was some, there's a reducer concept on the next page that we can uh, uh, we see what the requirements are. But basically, if we detect that we have this uh, alias, then um, we we assume that, the that this uh, result type um, is the reduce. Okay, if that's not the case, and if the functor implements join, then we use this functor as reducer, which could then also have in it and a final. But this is exactly, I mean, the case what, what you just asked. Uh, we, if the functor is the reducer, then it implements a call operator and join. And then the call operator can just natively use join. And so you don't have to duplicate the logic um, in join then also in the call operator. So that's nice. Okay, so if we, if, if, uh, if we don't have a reducer, uh, so which means that we have a scalar type or a view type um, as result type. And if the functor doesn't implement join, then we just assume that we do a sum type reduction, um, which means we use for init the default constructor, the final is a no op and join behaves like operator plus. Okay, there's another technical detail to this. Um, is if you are using any kind of tagged uh, reductions. So if you're giving um, your policy a tag um, and then decide on that what the call operator should be, and then in a join and final also need to be tagged if the functor is a reducer. But if we have a reducer, then we must never have a tag on them. We just suss that. Yeah, that's 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 the uh, very technical details. Okay. Okay, so what is a reducer concept? What do we expect that a reducer does? 
So first of all, I said, um, we need this alias. So the reducer, the alias needs to say, um, it's the type itself. And if that's the case, then we know, okay, the user want, wants to use this type as a reducer. Then um, we need to provide the value type so we can actually know what the value type is that we want to use here. Um, in some cases, uh, we can deduce that um, from the call operator. So that's what we're doing if the func does the reducer, but we are talking about re-reduce objects here. So you need to provide a value type and then a result view type, which is normally just Cocker's view value type. Then we need a join uh, function, um, which means we write into the first argument, updating it with the second one. So first one is a reference and then second one is a const reference. With init also takes a reference and yeah, initializes any kind of value. Um, we have final that can do something. And then we need to provide a reference to the member um, that holds the, uh, the, the, the result. And similarly, um, a view, um, basically. So you can ask a reducer to give you a view um, of the result variable. Okay, and then we, we assume that we can initialize a reducer um, both with a value and with a result view type. And that's pretty much it. So um, it's, it's a little bit work if you want to implement your own, actually. But it's it's much easier um, if you just have a functor um, and, and do that. Okay. Um, yeah, so I talked a lot about that and um, I cooked up a little example um, which is called advanced reductions and it tries to do a geometric mean um, by using all these member functions. Um, so um, yeah, just have a look. Um, the idea is, is basically to say like, we want to combine values, but at the end, we want to take the nth square root um, of the product of all these values. And we want to do that um, like by using final. Um, so yeah, have a look. Um, I'll give you like maybe like like 10 minutes to going through the solution real quick. I didn't put it in the slides like all the awesome people before me. So. Um, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. So basically, I mean, this is just the solution. So we just write this geometric, uh, main struct thing. So what we do is, uh, we just initialize our values to one, since we want to take like a product of values and then join is also just a product. So, uh, we take like, uh, we update the left-hand side with the right-hand side by multiplying. And then the final, which is a little contrived here is and then just say at the end of the reduction, um, take then the one over nth power of the value. And then we need to, uh, also use, um, yeah, uh, basically the same as the join here. So, um, we could just actually do that here, I guess. Let's just try that. So we can just say we want to use join update and then um, results in our view. And then, oh, I'm just, uh, closing it here. And then, yeah, the rest remains the same, right? I mean, this is what you, what you have seen. So, I mean, maybe maybe going through it, we, we say like we have n, we have 10 values and they are given by whatever, like one plus uh, i divided by 10. And we do that. We do the same thing on the host and then we compare them. Okay, so if we um, then just like run this, um, hopefully, let's see. So this is not, uh, this is on a separate machine because I didn't bother um, doing that, but should just be able to compile and yeah, cute is slow. Um, okay. Yeah. And, well, Okay, we see that we get the same result, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's maybe nice to see if you do it this way and the functor is the reducer, then um, your call operator can always be just join. And then the interesting logic, uh, you can just implement it in a join and final.
of course you could have done it a little bit differently here as well um, but just pre-computing like this factor and applying it um, in the operator so then you would not uh, use join directly or something like that um, but yeah that's I, I just wanted to demonstrate the three members okay uh, any more questions with respect to to the reductions or the example or whatnot? Um, okay, if I don't hear anything, then I'll just uh, go on to to the scans and prefix sums. Um, yeah, we want to learn how to use parallel scan. What uh, the API is, what kind of advanced things we can do there. Okay. So as a short introduction, what is a scan? Basically, we have a list of numbers and then we want to kind of create incremental results by say, if we have a running sum, uh, the first element um, is just the first element. And then the second one is the sum of the first and the second. And then we take the next one and the next and the next. So total is that's, that's what we're getting. And that's kind of what we want what we're expressing um, with the parallel scan concept in Cocos, which is of course parallelized, although this uh, all looks very, very serial. Okay, so for real example, um, this is an inclusive scan um, and the interface is very similar to the one given um, by parallel reduce. Um, so this simple case um, says, we want to collect um, the total result in a scalar type, um, but then we also want the partial results to be stored somewhere. And we do that um, in a view of the, of the respective size. Um, and then the functor um, looks at it different from the parallel reduce. Um, basically, we have an index. Uh, we need to have this value to update. So that's the same as for per reduce. And then the last parameter is if we want to, if we're like in the final round of doing this. Um, so something to note here is um, that parallel scan might launch multiple kernels. And we always know that there is one kernel that has is final equals true. So that's basically where we need to then write our results somewhere. But otherwise it's doing the same thing as a as a parallel reduce. So if I'm like thread I or I have get the work item I, then I just update the value with the respective value that I hold or that I'm interested in. And then only at the end I store the value um, that I'm getting. So this, oh, sorry, I messed that up. Value to update should the same be, uh, should be the same as update, of course. Um, and so in the end, when is final is true, then we know that update cons contains the sum of um, all previous work items up to I. And so the difference between an, an inclusive and an exclusive scan is just, do you do the update before or after writing the result somewhere? Okay, so again, if we have this list of values, one, three, five, six, seven, eight, then we uh, get this as a result. Like we just take this, the, the first item just remains the same. And then we just sum um, one of the, the other. And the total, um, we also uh, return somewhere. And that's 29 here, it's the last element. Okay, if we uh, want to do the same thing with exclusive scan, you see, nothing really changes except for the position of the update here. So here we say the exclusive scan result is just the value that we get and afterwards we update. Um, but yeah, the, the total is the same and the result basically is just shifted by one uh, where the first element is always uh, the neutral element, the identity, which is zero for, for, for the sum of course. Okay. And then what we can also do is we can do an exclusive and inclusive scan at the same time, because why not? And actually who needs this result variable? Um, we, uh, we already have that contained in our inclusive scan. So what we're seeing here is we just omitted the result variable. We don't need that anymore. 
And then um, for inclusive scan, uh, we do that after updating the value and we store the results for the exclusive scan before um, doing the update in the final step. And that's it. And um, that reminds me, I forgot to say, parallel reduce can also be called without the result variable if you provide final. Uh, but yeah, I should mention that next time I, uh, I go through the slides. Anyway, okay. So this is again, like the kind of simple example of what you can do um, with that. Um, uh, apparently I've duplicated this slide, sorry. Okay. Um, how does that actually look like? Again, um, for a GPU implementation, um, we have two kernels launched this time. So first uh, we have init um, called again. Uh, to get the the uh, the identity for the respective operation that we want to do, um, then we update the local range accordingly. Um, so we just call the functor basically on that, and then um, can compute the prefix sum um, within a workgroup um, using join between like these uh, these elements. So we get per workgroup the correct results, but we start like from the wrong result initially. Like if you're on a consecutive, if you're like uh, not on the first workgroup, then you don't know about the results of the previous workgroup, right? So then what we just do is we communicate um, the workgroup totals um, and do a prefix sum um, for all these workgroups together um so that we know what the totals are for all previous work groups and then we store the result and um we also might we might store the uh, intermediate results on each thread or we discard it okay and then in the second kernel um we then take these global results like for for every work group so every work group knows where to start from after this first kernel, and then updates them with the um, thread intermediate results. And in some cases, um, we might just recompute these uh, intermediate results instead of storing them. Okay, and in the end, um, we don't call the functor with the final results. Sorry, that's that's wrong. We don't implement final for, for scan, but we could do, sorry. Okay. But so ultimately, this looks very similar to a reduction, right? Um, except that we don't have final. Okay. So if we, uh, uh, so here we don't have any support for reducers, um, except for the functor would um, act as a reducer. Um, so we can uh, implement uh, a custom join then um, if we don't don't give any any reducer result here. Um, and then the behavior is that we know that the functor is called with is final equals true at least once. <laughs> oh, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, yeah, once. Let's say once. But we don't know if the functor will ever be called with fi is final equals false. But it might be the case that the functor is called with is final equals false more than once. In particular, this is true for different implementations. Like uh, for the serial implementation, we only call it um, with is final equals true once, never with is final equals false. Um, then for most host parallel implementations and the SQL implementation, we call it once with is final equals true and once with is final equals false. And then for the Qt and HIPAA implementation, uh, we don't store the intermediate results. So we first call it with is final equals false. And then in the second kernel, we call it again with is final equals false and then with is final equals true. And that has some implications um, on uh, caching results. Like if you say, um, in the first round, I want to uh, to to do some complicated logic to decide uh, how I want to update my variables, and then maybe just store um, store this result of doing something complicated. 
and using it in the, in the possible second pass. So for that, you need to take into account that this first pass might not happen or it happens multiple times. So it needs to be consistent if called multiple times. That's a little tricky. Okay. Um, again, for this, uh, we have an example, <laughs> which is uh, factorial, works pretty much similar to uh, to the other one with the advanced reduction. Again, we kind of want to uh, do a, a product instead of a sum, a running sum, so that we get like the first 10 or so uh, factorial results. And I'll give you like five minutes for that, It's uh, since it's a... All right. Does anyone need more time? Um, otherwise, just um, look at the solution here real quick. Okay. okay, so what we're doing here um is basically just implementing in it and then join in the same way so in it is just saying uh value is one because that's identity it's the identity for um the product type of uh operation we want to do and then join is just multiplying we don't have a final here since that doesn't exist anyway and then for the operator here we decide that we uh want to do um uh uh, uh exclusive product uh scan so we update after writing to our result and that's pretty much it so um we just just run it um didn't change anything we see like we just get factorial and that's kind of the same as as we do on the host so everything is, is fine okay um okay to wrap it up um we discussed advanced reduction we have uh, the default to just do kind of a sum reduction there are reducers we can reduce over multiple variables uh, values. Um, you can use these cocos reducers with custom scalar types. Um, if you uh, want to avoid uh, sy uh, synchronizing of the per reduce or per scan, you should either not provide a result type or make sure it's in in device memory space. And of course, and then you can also implement um, custom reductions. Um, by specializing then in a join and final, either by providing uh, a reducer yourself or overloading or adding then overloads to to your functor that act as a reducer. Um, and then um, for scans, uh, parallel scans, uh, we have all, all we also have parallel scans as opposed to to a lot of other frameworks. Um, like Sickle doesn't have it. There was a question um, in in the chat about that earlier. Um, it's pretty powerful. You can implement a lot of algorithms with it. Um, uh, the interface is is, uh, is a little slimmer. Now it's not as powerful as like per reduce because you cannot have um, like explicit reducers. You can only provide functors with the reducer capabilities. And yeah, but you can still still customize this, customize it. Uh, we don't yet support like multiple reducers for scans, um, but it's all like up for for like user demand basically. And yeah, I think that's that's done it um, for today. Um, we will resume tomorrow with doing some tool stuff. Uh, we will have some external talks um, about HPC Toolkit first, and then Tau. Um, for tuning, and then I will uh, probably wrap it up by talking about the rest of Cocos tools, um, how the interface works, what we can do, um, yeah, how to write your own tool um, if you want to do that. And yeah, we are still here for for another ten minutes at least if you have uh, questions.
Okay. Hello. Yeah, uh, could you go over again how the is final is used? I know you mentioned you spent some time explaining that, but I, I sort of missed that. Uh yeah, yeah, you sure. said it was back end dependent. Um which part in particular did you want to see was uh, a particular yeah. slice? This one? Right, this one, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I mean, so how is final is used? It just describes kind of the final pass um, mm -hmm. that you're doing. So when is final equals true, then um let me see. And then okay, here. Then we know that this value contains um, the the sum or the reduction of all previous work item values, right? Um, and okay. that's backend dependent on uh, mm. if if is final is called um, with false as file false, or if it calls called um, with is final equals false multiple times even. So that's something to be aware of. Um, in particular, if you try to do more fancy things with it. But we're not setting the value manually, right? It, of course, it, can you that repeat that? On, but you're not setting the is final value. No, that's part of the interface. Um, right. Like, yeah. Okay, thanks. Sure.